Natasha is the best free to play hero in Honkai Star Rail right now. And well, actually, she's the only free to play hero right now. But if you, like me, were not lucky enough to get Bailu, then use this guide to use Natasha to her fullest potential, starting with her light cones. So, her absolutely no questions asked, definite best in slot 5 star light cone is Time Waits for No One. So, this is technically Bailu's light cone, but I'm sure she won't mind Natasha using it. But now, Time Waits for No One works so well on Natasha as it firstly increases her max HP and outgoing healing, two things Natasha rarely needs, and it will also launch an attack based on her outgoing healing value whenever an ally attacks. Now this is quite nice and can give some additional DPS for Natasha who otherwise doesn't do that much damage other than heal, so overall it's a very nice light cone. Now for the 4 stars we have Natasha's post op conversation that will increase her energy regeneration and outgoing healing when you use her ultimate which is very nice and it is my personal favorite 4 star. The other 4 stars I recommend are Warmth, Shorten's Cold Knight and Shared Feeling, with Warmth, Shorten's Cold Knight increasing her max HP and healing allies whenever Natasha attacks and Shared Feeling increasing her outgoing healing and restoring energy whenever Natasha uses her skill. And so overall these two are decent alternatives to post-op conversation. Finally if you're really unlucky and don't have any of these icons or if you're in the early early game then using Konokopia would be your next best bet with her increasing her outgoing healing whenever she uses a skill or ultimate. So once you've got your light cones all sorted, it's time for everyone's favorite thing to farm and that's relics. So the best relic set for Natasha right now is the Passerby of the Wandering Cloud. So this set offers an increase in outgoing healing as well as increasing the party's skill points by one at the start of the battle. So this set offers all that we need with outgoing healing but also more skill points which is useful for everyone on the team but especially for Natasha as she is very reliant on her skill and so having more points to heal your allies is really really nice. Now this is where I usually offer an alternative relic set but uh, there really isn't one right now and so until Hoyoverse releases another healing set you are stuck using this one. Now for the main stats of this set you're gonna want to go for outgoing healing on your body and then speed on your boots. Now speed especially is very important as the quicker you can get a turn before the enemy the quicker you can heal your allies and I know for a fact there have been times when Natasha has just acted before the enemy and has managed to heal them saving their life before the enemy attacks them and so moving on from that next we have her planar ornaments which like the relic set there's only really one set to run and that's the bleat of the ageless so this ornament set will increase Natasha's max HP percentage and if she has 120 speed or higher she'll grant all allies an attack bonus so this is really good on Natasha as it not only does increase her max HP P, which is really good and is the set that her ability skill off of but also this buff is really nice as Natasha doesn't really do anything else in healing and so having a buff is really nice. Now for the main stats you'll want to be focusing on you're gonna want HP percentage for a sphere as well as HP percentage for the link. Now you can also run energy regen percentage for your link as well but it does trade off the power of her heals but gains a more consistent uptime with her ultimate so you can figure out which one you need depending on your party. And so you have your relics, you have your planar ornaments, but what should you be focusing on for the substats? Well the first and the big one is speed. Not only because of the planar ornament will be running, which requires 120 speed for the buff, but also because the quicker Natasha can act, the quicker she has a turn, the quicker she can heal, which is really important. Next is max HP percentage, as this will be the single best substat for increasing the power of her healing. Finally, you should focus on defense percentage and effect resistance percentage, as this will help Natasha not get one shot which is pretty important because uh, she can't really heal if she's dead and so moving on from that we reach her teams which being a healer Natasha can fit into almost any team out there but there are some important things to note about team building that we should go over so firstly let's create a free to play team with Natasha so one thing that we need to have in the team is a main carry or a main DPS character and so someone who's free to play deals a lot of damage and meets this role would be done hen so now that we have done Hen, who's the main DPS, and Natasha, who's the support and healer, we now have two spaces left. Now these two spaces are a lot more flexible than the first, but it is still usually recommended to run at least one tank, especially towards the late game. And the perfect person for this would be the Fire Trailblazer, another free to play character who's extremely good at soaking up damage, so your DPS characters and support characters do not die. Now next we have the fourth slot, which is the most flexible slot, and we could here run a sub DPS character 
character whose focus is on bringing more damage as well as a toughness bar breaker like for example Serval who could be a great addition here. But you could also run someone like Asta who's more of a support offering a good amount of buffs to the team which is something that Natasha lacks. So that's the basics of how to build a team around Natasha and just teams in general. And so finally we reach her Edelons. So she is only a 4 star and so obtaining these is very doable for a free to play player. And so the main ones you're going to want to be looking out for is firstly her E1 which will when she drops below 30% HP she will instantaneously heal herself without using a turn. So this is very good for survivability as it means if your tank cannot block the enemy there's a big AOE attack or if you just forgot to maintain heals on her then she'll be able to automatically top up her health and survive more enemies and so moving on we reach her E2 which will grant continuous healing for an ally whose HP is lower than 30% when she uses her ultimate so this is nice it will help her ally's survivability going forwards and overall is a strong E2 now her E4 will grant her 5 energy when she is attacked so this is good as having Natasha's ultimate up as much as possible will be the key to victory and making sure your allies don't die and a good tip for this is just to hold on to her ultimate for when perhaps the boss or the enemy does a massive aoe attack you'll have it up and you can heal them back to full hp and finally her e6 will grant her attacks extra damage based on her max hp so this one is a little weird as she's a support she's a healer and so you don't really need the extra damage i mean it's nice to have but it's definitely not needed but it can help speed up certain in battles especially when you're using the auto battling system and so overall it's an okay e6 but with that enjoy natasha she's amazing and i know i'll be using her for a long long time well until i get bailu then i'll probably immediately change her out but until then thank you for watching